I'm 22. I go to a college close to home and I stay with my parents. However, I've never wanted to be a freeloader and just live off my parents' money, so I went and got a part-time job and struggled while I was in college, but I still paid my parents $552 every single month for rent and to help out with other expenses because I calculated it and that would be my share. This is where it gets weird. About a year into college, my parents start demanding that I pay more, but my golden child brother, who's, you know, around the same age as me, isn't paying anything, so I don't think that's fair. So I come up with an ultimatum. Either they make the golden boy start paying too, or I'll leave them, move into my own apartment, and use that money with roommates. You won't believe what my mom had to say. All my life, I've lived wondering why my parents couldn't love me the way they loved my brother. And now I guess I don't want to find out the reason anymore. My name is Mason. I'm 22. Uh, like many people my age, I also dreamt of making it big. I have a passion for software design and have been pursuing a bachelor's degree in the same field. Not only that, but I also work part-time as a software developer. And whatever I make for my job, I save most of it to start my own company. That's why I still live with my parents, since college is close to my parents' house. It saves me transportation and money and other expenses as well. But I'm not freeloading on my parents' dime. See, every month I pay them $550 as my share in rent and other household expenses. So, my life had been going great, and I thought in just a few more years I'll be so close to achieving my dream. However, everything started going haywire when my brother, well, he's 23, and along with his whole, uh, family, decided to move in. Don't get me wrong, I love my brother, but he also had been a real troublemaker since we were children. And despite all that, he was still my parents' favorite. From a very young age, he had this knack for finding himself in the middle of one mess after another. Whatever it was, breaking curfews, skipping classes, or getting into fights at school, Cam somehow managed to stir up chaos at every single turn. And uh, yet, uh, despite all this mischief, my parents always had a soft spot for him. No matter how bad things got, they were quick to forgive him while I was left wondering what it would take just to earn the same kind of unconditional support. He always found a way to escape the consequences of his actions, and uh, somehow everything would fall on me. Whether it was breaking something valuable or getting into trouble at school, I was always the one who ended up cleaning up after him. At 19, Cam got married when his girlfriend found out she was pregnant. It all happened so fast. I mean, one minute he was talking about wild parties and late night hangouts. And the next, he was moving in with her family and preparing to become a dad. My parents were there for him through it all, supporting him both emotionally and financially. They've even helped him and his wife set up their own place, hoping that a fresh start would help him take responsibility. A year ago, Cam and his family moved out, taking a generous sum from both our parents and his wife's family to start a business. And now, with him moving back in, things have only gotten worse. Cam claims his business is thriving. He boasts about securing contracts with major companies in the construction industry, acting as if he's some kind of tycoon. He says he's just waiting for a $2 million payout to come through, <laughs> further exaggerating his success with each telling. I found it hard to believe given his track record of irresponsibility, but my parents were quick to buy into his story, hanging on to every word like he was delivering a TED Talk. They'd sit there wide-eyed and he spun tales of his supposed ventures, nodding along with admiration. Meanwhile, I'd watch from the sideline feeling like a ghost in my own home. When Cam announced that he sold his house to invest in a big consignment, I nearly choked on my dinner. The audacity of it all was just astounding, and of course, once the money comes in, he plans to buy a mansion in New York's wealthiest suburb, saying our entire family should move in with him. My parents are ecstatic, talking about how this is finally the breakthrough they always knew Cam would achieve. They're on cloud nine, ready to follow him into this new chapter, oblivious to the potential pitfalls that lay ahead. Meanwhile, I'm left wondering if this supposed success is just another one of Cam's schemes. 
another opportunity for him to escape responsibility while dragging everyone else along for the ride. While Cam waits for his windfall, he and his family contribute nothing to the household. They don't pay rent, they don't help with groceries, and they've practically taken over the house. They're two kids, who I love, don't get me wrong, add uh, to the chaos. The house is constantly loud, messy, and far from the peaceful environment I need to focus on my studies and work. You know, I actually remember walking into the living room one day, stepping over toys strewn across the floor and feeling like I was entering a war zone rather than my home. I used to cherish the quiet moments when I could sit down and code, but now those moments feel like a distant memory. It's as if my sanctuary has been stripped away and replaced by chaos and disorder. What's worse is that Cam and his wife seem to think that they can order me around, asking me to run errands, uh, yet they never offer to pay for anything. I feel like a live-in servant rather than a brother or even a son. They've taken over the kitchen, leaving their mess for me to clean, and their kids run around, interrupting my attempts to concentrate. It's frustrating, exhausting to deal with their constant demands when I'm trying to carve out a future for myself. It would have been bearable until last week when mom came into my room. At first, she started going on about how the house expenses have increased now that Cam has moved in with his family. Everything from bills to grocery is costing a lot. Deep inside, I knew that she was going to say it, but I didn't imagine she would be saying this to me. She asked me to pay more for what I already own. When I asked her if she had asked Cam the same, and if he's starting to pay rent, she just got annoyed and left the room. The next day over breakfast, Dad said the same thing as he stood up from the table, leaving me no chance to protest. Well, I glanced over uh, my brother, who shamefully looked back at me and then continued with his eating. The following night after work, I went straight to my mom. I told her that I was barely making money and uh, could not pay more than I already was. Since the both mom and dad have stopped talking to me, they're giving me a cold shoulder as if I'm a freeloader or something. You know, what hurts the most is watching how my parents treat him versus how they treat me. Cam gets away with everything, and despite everything, they never hold him accountable. Meanwhile, I'm paying rent, working hard in school, and saving up for my future, and yet it feels like none of that matters. I don't want to say it, but sometimes it feels like my efforts are invisible to them. Like no matter what I do, I'll never be enough in their eyes. I used to think maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough, that if I could only achieve more, they'd finally see me. But now, after years of waiting for that approval, I realize it may never, ever come. I've tried talking to my parents, but every conversation either ends up with them changing the subject or just ignoring me altogether. They're so wrapped up in Cam's grand plan and his promises of a big house and lavish lifestyle that they don't see what's happening. Right in front of them. They don't see how much it hurts to be overlooked, how difficult it is to be working so hard and yet still feel like you're not enough. What's worse is that even though Cam is older, he acts as if I'm the one who owes him something. He doesn't lift a finger to help around the house, leaving me to take on extra responsibilities. You know, without any acknowledgement. I've also thought about moving out, but that would cost even more, and right now my financial situation, <laughs> it doesn't allow me to do that. I really don't know what to do. Should I start paying extra money? But it just feels unjust. I'm not sure. Please let me know if I'm in the wrong here. Update number one. Hey guys, it's Mason again. I wanted to update you on my situation since my last post got so much feedback, I mean for real. You know, thanks for the support and suggestions, I really appreciate hearing your thoughts, even the ones that did not agree with me. A lot of people mentioned that I should just move out, but honestly, I'm not quite ready for that yet. I'm still working my way through college and saving up for my future, and the thought of rent and bills just stresses me out. Now, not just a house, but also my room has turned into a living zoo. I can't even explain how intrusive my brother's family is being. For example, the other day I walked into my room and found my niece's toddler's bed set up in a corner. 
No heads up, no asking for permission, just a random bed in my space, I mean, I get the kids need a place to sleep, but I didn't sign up to be their babysitter on their little makeshift playroom. I confronted Cam about it. He just shrugged it off, saying it was easier for everyone. Easier for who? Not me! It gets even wilder. Just yesterday, I found Cam's wife rummaging through my things. I walked in and caught her going through my desk drawer. I mean, what gives? I felt violated like my personal space was being invaded. When I asked her why she was doing this, she just smiled and said she was looking for a pen. A pen? Seriously, there's a whole house full of pens in the desk downstairs, and she couldn't just ask me? It was infuriating. I didn't want to blow up over something that seemed trivial, but it felt like they were treating me, uh, I don't know, like a communal space in my room. Later that night, I tried to rest after a long day of classes and work, hoping for some peace. But as soon as I sat down to start the studying, the kids burst into my room, excitedly dragging their toys with them. I love them, but I need to focus on my schoolwork. See, I had to explain to them that my room was off limits, and it felt like I was talking to a wall. They just didn't get it, and Cam did not even intervene. Instead, he just laughed it off like it was no big deal. I was frustrated that my brother wasn't even setting boundaries for his kids. The last straw came when I overheard Cam talking to our parents. I thought I could trust them, but I heard him say that I needed to be more supportive of the family during these trying times. That's when I realized they've been discussing my savings behind my back. I've been diligently saving up for my future company, and hearing him say that made my blood boil. He had the audacity to suggest that I should give him my hard-earned savings because, quote, family helps family. What the hell? When I confronted him about it, he just looked at me like I was the selfish one. He argued that with the extra expenses from having them living here, it was my duty to help out. I couldn't believe it, I've been working my butt off to save the money for my future, and now he expects me to just hand it over because he made choices that led him to need help? It felt incredibly unfair. I refused to let him guilt trip me into giving up my dreams. At that moment, I realized I needed to get some serious boundaries set. I'm not responsible for their decisions or their financial troubles. I've spent years focusing on my own path, and I'm not going to let them derail my plans just because they think I owe them something. So I took a deep breath and told Cam that I could not help financially, and that he needed to respect my space and privacy. I hope this leads to a better understanding, but it's tough to say if it'll change anything. For now, I'm sticking to my guns and prioritizing my goals even if it means facing more drama with my family. Anyways, thanks again for the support. I'll keep you updated on what happens next. Update number two. Hey, um, everyone. So, yeah, it's Mason again. I wish I had better news, but things have taken a turn for the worse, and if you thought things were messy before, they've reached a new level I didn't think was possible. So... After my last update, uh, you know, the guilt tripping from my parents went from bad to absolutely unbearable. It wasn't just about paying a bit more here and there now, they were outright expecting me to hand over my savings. Apparently, my brother's payment was still nowhere to be seen, and every day they kept finding ways to corner me about helping out. Family helps family. My mom kept repeating it like it was a mantra. It was always about Cam, everything, and the constant emotional blackmail was exhausting. Then the real bomb dropped. A couple days ago, my parents got a phone call from my brother-in-laws. I was in my room trying to block out the usual noise from Cam's kids when I heard raised voices. At first, I couldn't make out much, but the conversation quickly escalated. My mom was pacing the house, and she sounded well devastated. I went downstairs to see what was going on. And that's when I learned the truth, the full truth, about my brother. See, turns out Cam had lost everything a long time ago. That big consignment he claimed was going to pay him millions. It was a lie. In reality, he had dumped all his money into a shady company months ago, and they had taken him for everything that he had. The entire waiting for a payout story was just that, a story. That's not all. 
He had been living with his in-laws for months, mooching off them, and when they had enough, they kicked him out. And his family out, and that's when he showed up at our house, spinning more lies about his supposed success. I couldn't believe it. I mean, part of me always suspected that his big business deal was too good to be true, but I never thought that he'd go this far. Cam had literally moved in with us because he had nowhere else to go, and instead of owning up to it, he doubled down on his lies, dragging everyone, including me, into his mess. I thought my parents would be furious when they found out. I expected some kind of confrontation, maybe even for them to finally see through all the excuses Cam had been making, but instead, they were devastated in a way I had not anticipated. And rather than hold Cam accountable for his actions, they turned to me. Suddenly, the conversation wasn't about how Cam had ruined everything. It was about how I needed to step up and save the family. My dad sat me down after the call and laid it out bluntly. Your brother is in trouble. Well, Mason, this is the time for you to step in and help. See, you've been saving for years and it's your turn to give back to the family. You can always start your business later. But your brother, oh, he needs that money now. It's that simple, really. It's crushing. I'm stuck in this impossible situation where no matter what I do, I'm the villain of the story. If I give them my savings, everything I've worked for will just be gone. And I'll have to start over, from scratch. But if I refuse, my parents will see me as a selfish, uncaring, ungrateful person. And let's be real. Even if I did give Cam the money, it wouldn't fix anything. He's proven time and time again that he can't be trusted with finances. And I know deep down that giving him my savings would not help him get back on his feet. It would just be another temporary little band-aid on a problem that runs much deeper. So, here I am, caught between a rock and a hard place wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do next. My parents won't stop pressuring me, and Cam? He's still acting like he's done nothing wrong. Anyways, I'll update you guys. Update number three. Today I'm finally going to move out of my parents' house. I don't care what happens next. Hey guys, it's me Mason again, and maybe this is going to be the last update. I'm not sure, but I needed to let everything out of my system. So, as you guys know, my brother, in fact, my whole family has been total jerks to me, and I've had enough. Mom and Dad not only forgave Cam and continued to let him stay in the house, but also just kept pestering me to pay extra and give up my savings to my big brother, who always looked out for me. What the hell do they mean by that? I'm not sure. What I'm sure is, is that they're never going to change or come to their senses. Cam says he's finally serious about life and ready to take responsibility. According to him, he's come up with this new business idea with his friend and just needs a little investment, which he'll return as soon as the business takes off. I don't understand how my parents always buy into this. You know, he might be their golden child, but to me, he's just a selfish man who cares about nothing but himself. So, unable to deal with this crap any longer, I decided to just up and move out. Uh, besides that, I'm going to keep it a secret for now. I feel like if I tell my family this right away, they'll do anything in their power to stop it. I looked for a few studio apartments and rooms for rent, but none really fell into my budget, to be honest. I needed something I can afford along with bills and groceries and still save whatever I can for my dream company. The good news finally came yesterday. A friend of a friend is an immigrant and looking for cheap apartments for rent. I felt like if he agreed to be my roommate, we could afford a small studio apartment and even share the bills and groceries. This morning, we finally met and discussed everything. The good part is, he already found a place and a roommate is exactly what he needed. The place is a little far from college, but hey, no worries. I can just travel on foot, but this emotional turmoil and blackmailing which I've been suffering in my own home won't be there anymore. Tonight, I'm going to secretly move out. I can't wait to see their faces when they found out that I'm gone. Let's hope this works for the best. Guys, please wish me luck. Update number four. So, here's the promised update about what happened after I secretly moved out. Prepare yourself because if you're on my side, you're going to get real furious. To recap, after weeks of enduring the madness at home, 
I decided to move out in secret. It wasn't impulsive, not by any means. I had been quietly searching for a place for a while, making sure it was affordable. Close enough to work and flexible with my college schedule. After some effort, I found the perfect spot thanks to a friend of a friend looking for a roommate. I didn't say a word to my family about it. I knew if I so much as hinted at my plan, I'd be bombarded with guilt trips and dramatic outbursts. So I quietly set everything in motion, making sure my move was under the radar. I packed, little by little, keeping my stuff hidden away in a storage in my car, waiting for the day when I could leave without confrontation. I wanted out. But I didn't want the drama that would inevitably follow if I announced it. The day finally came, I had everything I needed. I signed the lease and I made my way to my new place. It was not big or luxurious by any matter, but it was mine, and that's all that I needed. The first night in my own space felt like taking a deep breath after suffocating for months. The silence, oh, it was beautiful. For the next couple of days, I continued life as usual, going to work and school as if nothing had changed. I knew it wouldn't be long before they noticed I wasn't around, but I had no intention of revealing my move until it became absolutely necessary. Then the inevitable happened. My mother called me one evening complaining about some household issues and casually slipping in a reminder about the increased rent I was supposed to be pitching in for. She asked me where I was and why I wasn't coming home for the past few days. I could almost hear the expectation in her voice, the same assumption that I would continue carrying this financial burden like always, and that's when I announced the big news. I told her calmly, I don't live there anymore. There was a silence on the other end of the phone, so I added, You can enjoy the freeloaders now. The silence stretched for a moment before she exploded. She couldn't believe I had left without telling anyone. She kept going on about how I was abandoning the family and leaving them in a financial ruin. She asked me how I could be so heartless, especially after everything they've done for me. She made it clear that they've been counting on my money to keep the household afloat, and now, now I was just bailing on them when they needed me the most? But it didn't faze me. I was done. Done with the guilt trips, done with emotional manipulation, and done with being their scapegoat. My mother tried to lay the pressure off, telling me I had betrayed the family, and that they did not know how they were going to manage without my contribution. But I stood on business. I reminded her that I've been contributing more than my fair share for far too long, and it wasn't my fault Cam had messed up their life. The next few days, oh, they were rough. My phone was constantly blowing up with messages from parents, especially my mother, who could not accept the fact that I finally stood up. She kept sending texts pleading for me to come back, followed by guilt-laden messages about how I was destroying my family. But you know what? I don't care anymore. They had it coming and I saved myself and that's it. But before I end this final update, let me ask you guys this. Would you have ran away from your family too if you were in my shoes?